One of the most important things that you do as a leader is develop others. And in the process of doing so, you invariably will come across people's lack of confidence, specifically their inner critic. And sometimes we're well-intentioned. And what we do is we begin to argue with the inner critic, and that rarely, if ever, really works. What does arguing with somebody's inner critic look like? Well, it's those well-intended comments such as, you've got this, I have confidence in you, you've done something like this or even more difficult before and made it successful. And so rarely is that a supportive statement. It comes from the heart, it's well-intended, but rarely is it as effective. And instead, there are four things that we can do. Welcome to Leadership Warmup, I'm Miranda Walachowski. So the four things that we can do are, number one, is to acknowledge. Acknowledge what the person is experiencing or feeling. I can see that you are feeling anxious or I can hear in your words that you are lacking confidence. Second, we validate. And the best way to validate is to be able to share our own experience or a very relatable experience. So when I was in your role and I had to execute on a similar project, I also felt a lack of confidence. And I learned about myself that that meant that I really cared and wanted to do well. And then this is how I negotiated or dealt with my lack of confidence in order to have a good outcome. And so being able to normalize the experience is often very helpful. Many times people feel, I think I'm the only one who feels this way and therefore there's something wrong with me. The third thing that you could do is to then set precedence or draw forth precedence and strength. So pointing to somebody's background and where they have been successful with something and manifested some strengths that could be leveraged into this current situation is a wonderful support modality. So for example, last quarter, you also were feeling apprehensive about you know, X deliverable or X project and you made it work. What did you learn about yourself during that process? And what strengths did you utilize there that you could apply to help you make this project successful as well? So always pointing back to precedents of success and strengths really works. The fourth thing that you can do is to actually give support, but ask it in a way that you will get some good data. So saying something like, let me know what you need, or what do you need, or please call on me um, when you need help, those things rarely, rarely work. Instead, a playful question such as, if you had a magic wand and you could use it for three things, what would be the three things you would do in order to get this project moving in the right direction? In order to feel more confident with this project, whatever it may be. And listen carefully, because that individual is going to give you some valuable information that you can utilize to actually support them. So those are the four steps that you could take instead of arguing with your direct reports and your critic. And not only is this about working with direct reports, it could be a teacher-student relationship, mentor-mentee, even a parent-child. Um, so peer-to-peer, -peer, anywhere, anywhere we are confronting someone who is lacking confidence at any given moment, this is a wonderful strategy to support them. And the best leaders that I've met are non parel when it comes to developing and leading others. And therefore, the better that we can get at that process, the better outcomes we're going to have overall and impact with our leadership. So I hope you found this helpful. And so for more leadership warmups, please connect with me at LinkedIn. And you could also find us at our YouTube channel, Leading and Teaming by Miranum. So until the next one, bye now.